Ja, grüßt euch im Guitar Warehouse. Heute äh, zu Gast Alexander Misko. Entgegen der Anweisung von unserem kleinen Philipp Scorsese hinter der Kamera heißt er wirklich Misko, nicht Mischko. Also Alexander Misko. Yeah, hello guys. Uh, my, my name is Alex Misko. So it's right. Misko. Yay! Cut! <lacht> Hi hey guys, we're here in the Guitar Warehouse studio and our guest today is Alexander Mischko, a young guy playing a really great guitar and he's on German tour right now. Yeah. Yesterday you played in Munich, today you're going to Cologne. Yeah. We heard a song from him before, it was called Caravan, yep. like with an oriental yeah, feeling. Yeah, this one. Um, can you show us a little bit about the, about the techniques you used in your songs, like your tapping and overtone oh, stuff? Yeah. Just little example yeah sure I would love to and uh, thanks for having me here and uh, my, my actually my surname is Misko 
this yeah, so it's Russian. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, some people like it, in Russian it sounds very different. But really? yeah, um, you pronounce it in Russian. So that's Please why say. that's why it's Misko. Misko. Yeah, Misko. Okay, all right. Yeah. It's, it's hard. Yeah, to pronounce. yeah. Let's so it, let's so let's it's Misko, and for that reason, I even put it here so people would say let, it. Let's <laughs> say Alex. <laughs> yeah, let's call me Alex. Yeah. So yeah, um, I, I use lots of techniques, and um, one of the like in, in finger style, you're just trying to be a rock band. You're trying to imitate as many instruments as possible. Like so that's why. Bass drums and everything. Yeah, like percussion, like uh, tapping, like harmonics, and we're just trying to get as many sounds as possible because it's uh, it's it's great when you have different layers with right. different textures. And uh, um, like regarding the caravan song, actually, um, there's a, there's a cool idea. I, I use a piece of paper like this. Uh, it's very like thick paper, and um, it has an arrow here, <laughs> just so I would know. Um, which side works better, and actually it's important. So I have a standard tuning here. Well, it's not really, a, it's not really a standard, it's like a standard D, like one step lower, but it doesn't matter. You can do that in any tuning. So I just, one day I was experimenting with putting some foreign objects between my strings, <laughs> and as I usually do. And, <laughs> and uh, I, I found this cool thing that if you put a piece of paper like this, and you start playing like anything, it, it creates this kind of, a, not really oriental, but uh, it, it feels like there are some non-guitar, non-guitaristic instruments are playing, right, right. like some percussion thing. It's it's shaking and rattling, and at the same time, the most the coolest thing here is that this edge of this uh, paper um, and makes the first string vibrate because it goes underneath it. Right. So I just show it to you. I don't play the first string. But it still sounds kind of crazy. Yeah, it's, it's like a like a tremolo or like a, something like this. Just because uh, I plug the second string and it makes the first string vibrate so you, because of so the. So you paper. get kind of pedal tone out of it without playing the tone actually. Right? So yeah, it, yeah, it's, just, it's it just creates this yeah, drone. Yeah. It, it, it's, it feels like there's another another instrument playing. Right. So now I have like two instruments playing, and um, then I can add some percussion. And uh, I add, I actually added the percussion later. Like uh, the original song wasn't w wasn't having any percussion, but it doesn't matter. So um, this hand is already busy. So I do kick drums with this hand. It's it's pretty unusual technique because usually we do kick drums with this hand, and that's why I have this cool. Uh, callus here <laughs> and um, yeah girls love it so yeah w when I play it like this uh, I add some percussion with this hand just like this there's a kick drum and there's a snare drum just like just like on a real drum so now I have like the third instrument playing so it goes like I mean if you put lots of reverb on it it sounds more like authentic but doesn't matter and then I still can play some strings I still can play some notes and that's very cool I can't really play anything on this side but this side is totally open for me you can see all the notes all the notes are working yeah because you fret them and then yes, yeah, I can, yeah I extreme. fret them yeah. just uh, behind the paper I, I can't do harmonics unfortunately but it doesn't matter and uh, that's why I can add some bass so mm. now I can like have the fourth instrument playing like uh, uh, like um, Yeah, now I have bass. And then I can even have some melody like... Uh, yeah, and at the same time I still keep plucking these muted strings. So the feeling of this, those oriental instruments uh, just stays here all, all for the whole time, for the whole song. The ground layer for the yeah, layer. Like, like a, yeah, it's like layering. Uh, but this song is not about layering. I wasn't trying to like, create as many instruments as possible. I was just trying to uh, get as many um, possibilities uh, as possible from using that paper. Because like, otherwise it's just... I, I, don't, I don't use this paper in any other songs because I, I squeezed all the ideas from it in this song. In, in, okay. in one song. Yeah, and I think it's, it sounds pretty oriental. For me, it's like a, a cheesy song for a Middle Eastern movie from <laughs> like 80s. So <laughs> I always describe it as like some caravan with Bedouins and camels right, right. wandering around the hot desert under the hot baking sun. Oh. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, right, like right, okay. dri driving the camel <laughs> like, like it's a car. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that, that's the idea behind the song. It just uh, the inspiration has come just because of the paper. So it started really with it the paper. It started with the technique. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that's why it's very important. Some people think that uh, you should have some uh, deep 
deep emotion in your head before you write music, but I believe it's uh, anything can be inspiring. So it's it, not it, not a kind of feeling or like an idea. It's maybe it's some technique. And yeah, sometimes the, it's the, a, a the idea has head. come later. That's right, the idea. Okay. Because at first I just put a paper, then I started playing. Oh Jesus! It sounds like sounds All right, like caravan. From, from it from sounds there. like Middle Eastern music, and I was like, yeah, I have this. Per, like uh, clear image in my head right, right. and I just tried to put it into my guitar but it all started with a technique and that's the important point because like uh, anything can be can be a reason to write right. music as long as it contains your emotion and your like care for that music. When, when you started playing guitar um, how do you start just like play regular chords and do like the basic stuff like playing songs and learning the chords so were you really into that crazy finger start stuff from the beginning? Well, uh, I started as a classical guitarist, so I just right. I wasn't doing anything. Like I was playing video games until I was like 12 or 13, and then my parents just That's decided. That's what boys do. I love video games. I still play video games. So yeah, and uh, then my parents decided to present me my like first classical guitar uh, on New Year's Eve. I don't know why. Maybe I, I actually shown some interest to in music. Oh, I right. was very into like hip hop and rap. And uh, it's a perfect. Yeah, perfect and maybe they're thinking that yes, it's perfect for guitar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then I started to attend classical guitar lessons okay. straight away. So I kind of missed uh, this um, this like stage when you play with your friends oh, okay. uh, in, in the backyard and you learn songs and sing in the in the in the big companies. I, right. I, I I'd never done this. Like, All right. I, and uh, I, j I just started to play classical, and I uh, like I just had um, had the privilege to have a great teacher, and I I have never been a good student. But uh, he still managed really? to give me the basics, and okay. that was very important. I, do, I, I was doing classics, uh, classical for three years, and then I just got uh, got to see Don Ross right. playing in the internet. It's like the the greatest Canadian fingerstyle guitarist, right. one of the fathers yeah. of the style, and I was instantly got hooked because like it's just so amazing. Like, and uh, I was so inspired by his music, by original music. Was there a certain technique? Sorry, a reason? No, no. Technique. You said okay, no, that's what I want to learn. It's not about techniques at all. It's about the music. Because no, I mean, when, when you watched on Ross, oh man, I gotta learn this because oh, of, I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, there were there were some techniques that like uh, blew me away. For example, like he has a song when he plays some slap harmonics, like. <laughs> like And at first, I heard this song. I heard this song on uh, on the recording. I haven't had any video, and okay. I was trying to, to like to play it by ear. But I just have never seen these techniques, and I was thinking, oh, how how does he do this? <laughs> and it was, it was a like weird tuning too. And I never like tuned my guitar to weird tunings before. So I was like, oh, I, I need to take a look how how it works in the internet. Yeah. And uh, then I just got to see all his songs. I was amazed by the technique, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, the music is so yeah, good. For sure. I was so inspired by the music, so I after that I just. I was spending like six hours every day just uh, learning his songs and some other guitarists' songs. Like I, my biggest inspirations at that time and, and still are uh, like guys like Andy McKee, like John Gum, Mike yeah, Dawes, right. Thomas yeah. Lieb, Preston Reed, um, Adrian Legg, uh, Pino Forestieri, all, all the guys, basically all the guys for from Candy Red Records. First last finger style, yeah. yeah from Candy yeah. Red Records, yeah, yeah. All this like kind of older generation of players that were developing this yeah, style. Yeah. And uh, I consider them so huge like for my music and for my uh, perception of everything uh. so I, I wouldn't be able to do anything if i wouldn't learn their songs so right. like i'm really thankful to all of them that they like actually composed this yeah. music so yeah, i could yeah. learn from them right right and um yeah i was so inspired by that by original music so i was learning and learning then i started to compose on my own then i started to do some arrangements of like popular songs because right. it just was interesting but then I got to see that it actually can get you some views in the internet yeah some yeah like some business some kind thing of going on <laughs> <laughs> yeah some kind of million something like yeah. that yeah and it, actually it's fun to arrange and uh, but I just don't really like when people call me like a cover artist because I no, never I, consider myself I, yeah I think that's I think that's wrong I think it's it's uh, it, it uh, leads people to that kind of playing if they I don't know listen to a switch of mine arranged on one guitar they get a connection because they know that song yeah sure it's much oh, easier. that's really good because I know the song and I, can, I really get connected to the artist and then I'll maybe watch, uh, 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 d d listen to his, uh, his own stuff. Yeah, sure, yes. because like, we still need to understand that it it's would be stupid to demand uh, from people like to listen to your music because like it's it's an instrumental guitar music it's so niche eh? like it's so yeah, underground it's, uh, and uh, it's, right. it's only for the really like big lovers of acoustic guitar Guitars, music yeah and though I'm pretty sure that this music can be accessible for everybody definitely uh, but still it uh, it's not that easy to attract people to it yeah well I think um, the 
the, the thing that really fascinates guitar players, they really know how hard it is to get that sounds out of a guitar. If but you don't play guitar, you're just, okay, he's doing some stuff, but he plays guitar. But yeah, but then it, th there's a very important point, because like, you can write music for guitarists for all of your life. And yeah. actually, it's, it's good, because there are some great examples, like the band, like my, one of my favorite progressive bands, like Animals as Leaders. And, or maybe Dream Those Theater, ones, yeah. let's say, yeah. more older generation. I mean, these guys clearly write music for musicians. It's, right. so, it's so like dance and yeah, complicated and, and, and sophisticated everything. with yeah. all this math, progressive stuff going on, but they managed to uh, like fulfill the stadiums. <laughs> Put it in songs. That's yeah, it, yeah. I mean, yeah, they managed to fulfill the stadiums. Yeah. It's not for some nerds who just listen to time signatures and things. It's yeah, for yeah. It, 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 it works for people, right. yeah. So that's why I believe that maybe it just would take some time to get this genre going out of this niche thing. Because now we can go, uh, we, we can like uh, show this this thing to people only we, if we do covers and right. they accidentally stumble across it on Facebook. Yeah. So that's the only way to get it across the people. But that's okay. But yeah, that's okay that it, it's still a niche, it's still a very nice community. So everybody knows here and everybody knows each other in finger style yeah. and it, there is no competition. That's right. what I really enjoy about yeah. it. I mean, you play together. We play together. Yeah. We like communicate. We do tours together. We support each other. So it's very important, cool. and that's why I'm very happy to be kind part of it. Kind of family of thing. It's like a family yeah, thing. Right, it, cool. If you, if everybody would be like a superstar, it, it would never happen. Yeah. Because like everybody yeah, would yeah. be like, ah, uh, like, I'm, I'm the you guy, want to yeah. take my money? Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, when you say you started with classical lessons, are there anything um, from that first uh, starting of guitar that you really use today? Yeah, and uh, it, 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 for me so. it was very fundamental. It was very important, like uh, starting from even even from the posture that I'm doing now. Yeah. When I practice and when I or when I record stuff in a studio, uh, I always sit in a classical position. Yeah. Not, not really like this because yeah. now it's kind of. Uh, perverted <laughs> position. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> like uh, be because I have a strap and I sit not on this uh, um, like high, high, chair. high high chair. But in fact, uh, the chair should be uh, lower, and I use a foot stand for, for my right yeah, foot. Right yeah, yeah. on for left if you if you're right-handed, yeah. if you're a normal person. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, for for your right foot and. Uh, it, what's uh, what I really like about this posture and why it's for me it's much better than uh, playing the guitar like this, mm -hmm. uh, just because you have many points of connection to your body. Mm. So it means your guitar is very stable. Uh, for example, yeah, if we imagine if I'm sitting in classical position now, I have a point of connection here, here on my neck, right. uh, on my chest actually. This hand, this hand, this forearm. Right. And uh, it means that I have like one, two, three, four, like five, uh, five joints. And uh, it means that my guitar is very stable. It would never go out like All right, this. Okay. I, even if I play stuff like this, like let's say, it, it basically, it means I lose the connection of this hand, but mm. still my guitar doesn't go crazy. Right, right, right. Because like I, I, I hold doesn't it with my, with, my, with my feet. Yeah. And uh, also I use some piece of foam when I, even like, even it goes like this because jeans can be slippery. So yeah, so I use a piece of foam. But yeah, and if I would play stuff like this, you can see it goes like. Yeah, it's, it's more movable. It's much harder to yeah, control, yeah. especially if you do stuff like. Yeah, yeah so all right. The guitar just, oh shit. Oh. Uh, that's, oh, that's, that's a little magic secret. Pillow. So, yeah, that's yeah. my secret. That's why. Magic pillow. <laughs> yeah, and um, that that, that, that's tricks. another reason. That's another reason why uh, I prefer classical position. It's just a pillow, but in fact, it's not a pillow. It's, uh, there is a towel inside. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's handmade by my mom. Thanks, mom. And uh, I put it uh, here on this Velcro fabric, and it just uh, helps me to have the guitar in this angled position when right. I play standing. So I just see the fretboard better, it's easier to do percussion, it's easier to do harmonics, just in general it's easier. Well, I'm working on my beer belly now, but... Uh, keep trying. Yeah, keep, I, I'm, I'm keep trying, but for now, yeah, I'm using a pillow. And I stole this trick from John Gong, like he's one of my biggest yeah, heroes. Yeah, and from Eddie Van Hale. Just oh notice, yeah. because he put on some mechanic to put the guitar like, oh the yeah. sneak and tap like that. Yeah, yeah but, but I mean, I, the, the, never, first, the, never first guy, the, the first guy who I've seen do, do, doing this was John Gomes, so right, okay. I kind of consider him as like my biggest inspiration. So yeah, and uh, it's very important to play in this classical position. And also I believe that the classical posture of your hands, like the fundamental thing, uh, is the fundamental thing too. Because like some people play guitar like this, some people like play guitar like this, but uh, I think when you start playing, it's, it's very important to keep it all classical because right. that's the basic. If if you know how to play the basics, then you can uh, change your position as much as you but want. You can to. always return to that basic. Yeah, thing. but at first you all need right. to know how it works because like those classical guys, like I don't know, uh, like Terega and uh, all these famous yeah. guys who have been developing this approach, they were right. I mean, it it was like mm. hundred hundred years of making. Oh so yeah, yeah. It, 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 thought it, about it, that. It's worth something. It, it's worth mentioning, and. Um, 
the idea is that, for example, this hand, uh, some people, uh, actually it happens when people do tapping, I mean legato, leg legato techniques, because like some people doing this, uh, do, doing these techniques pretty randomly like this, and uh, they, then they ask why, why it doesn't sound good, or why I like stumble across other strings when I play like this, but in, but in fact it's just because of the wrong hand position, and uh. it's, it, there's, there's a reason why in a classical you should play like this, you shouldn't uh, get your thumb over it. I mean, for sure you can if you play some weird chords, but uh, in a classical it's kind of forbidden. So yeah, if you, if you play tapping like this, if your fingers are perpendicular to frets, then you instantly have... Oh, gee, um, I made a mistake. I never touch any mm. unnecessary strings, just because my hand is in the right position. But if I put it like this... Sounds good. It's not comfortable, but and also I, I just miss the notes and doing these thing, things, and it's very important just to understand. Also, like uh, regarding this hand, I think believing uh, I believe that starting as a classical like this, it's it's very important too because you know how all the fingers work, you know how to do this uh, tricky arpeggios and things, and then if you don't feel comfortable with it, but if you can play stuff like mm -hmm. this, you can change it like as you want to, like some guys with a thumb, they use a thumb pick and they prob they basically uh, like put their hand like this. Right. But still you can play it, like I just don't prefer to play like this, I play like this only if I do percussion. Mm -hmm. Like, But if I don't, percussion, I don't do percussion, usually I still hold my hand as in a classical form. So yeah, and it, it all goes from classical, and it's very important for me to keep keep this stuff because, like, I, I have been playing like this for my whole life. Alexander, you got some your Paul Rouge guitar with you, and there's some kind of weird mechanics. Oh yeah, yeah. Wanna, <laughs> can you show them? To yeah, people? sure. Uh, can you just turn around. Yeah. Got that on the cam? Oh, I'm not sure if it's visible, but yeah, you can see these huge metal things here, but they are hidden behind the headstock, so yeah. Tell if us I sit why. like this, there's nothing special going on. Yeah, no. And uh, really. yeah, and uh, that's that's the secret, and uh, it's not my invention. It's the, these things are banjo yeah. pegs, banjo, yeah. like uh, banjo, tuning yeah, pegs. Tunings, yeah. yeah, and actually they're called banjo detuners. And it means that uh, they were invented like in 60s, and but still like it's, it yes. can be impressive for people because like not, not so many people have been using this for, for yeah. guitar. And the first one was, I believe, was Edren Leg. Yeah. Uh, from the UK, he's one, like one of my biggest inspirations. He put them like in the 70s, and then it was John Gomm and uh, Nick Harper and some other guys. But yeah, yeah. The, the idea is that um, you can choose the, the interval between any two notes, and you can set the special stops. You can see I have, uh, I have screws here, the black one and the silver one. So uh, it means that I choose the higher note, let's say this one, I fix it with a black screw, then I go to a lower note, let's say this one is like semitone here, but you can choose any, any interval until you break the string. And uh, you, 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 screw the, you, you screw up the... Um, not screw up, it means a different Ti thing, it means different thing in English. <laughs> tighten up. Yeah, tighten up the, the silver screw, and uh, now, voila, there's a magic. I never miss a note. And uh, you can do some, funny, some funny stuff like... Um, Oh, kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, it's like a random song, but I mean, you can see it sounds... Uh, sounds cool, probably I composed a song out of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, and the, the idea is that I never miss a note, and it's, it's such a cool trick because um, it's, it's not only impressive, like, so people will think I'm doing this by ear, uh, because, like, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a good technical thing to imitate some uh, slide guitar playing, like... Yeah. Some cool bands. Like a B bender? You, yeah, like B bender thing. And also, what I really enjoy about this is that you can change the tuning silently without mm -hmm. plucking. So it means that if, like, you play a song, and then suddenly you need you need to go to this kind of a tuning. Maybe you have a um, key change or something, and uh, you know that uh, if you would have a regular pegs, you would have to do like 
Mm. Or maybe you need to mm. remember the position of the peg and do it like uh, physically, like just remember yeah, yeah, the yeah, just like how, how far you should turn. Yeah. But it's crazy. It's very unreliable because then you change the string, and then change the strings, and gone. all the pegs go in different direction again, yeah. and it just gets crazy. So that's why I. But with these pegs, I can do this magic trick. Like for example, I'm playing some stuff, then I. And I can change the tunings of, uh, of all the strings like this, mm -hmm. like, I like I was doing now. But uh, in this example, I was just turning them basically randomly. But uh, if you would compose a song around it, and I have lots of songs, I just can't really play anything in this tuning now in standard. <laughs> uh, yeah. <You're> right. <laughs> That's a good excuse not to play anything, yeah? yeah? Just sorry, I'm not familiar with standard uh, I'm tuning. I'm sorry, yeah. No, like, they like, can't do that. Like, <laughs> So yeah, and uh, but I have a song, I have lots of songs when I use them, like uh, probably if you guys are familiar with my creations, you have seen my Careless Whisper arrangement, and that's one of the like, biggest ones, and uh, I'm using the banjo pegs a lot there, and also you can check out John Gum's song called Passion Flower, and he uses them beautifully there. So uh, yeah, it, it opens up many, many possibilities, and uh, what's What's a, another cool nerdy trick about them that uh, you can, uh, if, if for example, um, this peg now in a good position, you can see it's comfortable to turn. But if I would have to do the same with this one, it would be like I would break my hand. So these pegs have, have this cool feature that I can just tighten up here and I can do this funny magic trick. Yay! Anybody uh, needs a peg? And I can just put it in a different position, in, in, a, in a position which would be convenient for me, like this one. There are six That's different nice. sh positions in the shaft. And yeah, I just put it like this and I can play. Right. So this is a Keith Banjo Tuners. They produced by Beacon Banjo Company, American company uh, that I proudly endorse. So will they be on your signature guitar? Excuse me? Is you uh, going to get a signature guitar, I heard? Yeah. Uh, will they be part of it? Yeah, Baton Rouge are, uh, is a great company. They have been supporting me for a couple of years now. I'm happy to endorse their instruments. And yeah, now we're, now we're building the signature guitar. It will be very special. And banjo pegs are just the smallest part of it because okay. there are going to be lots of... Can uh, you say something about it? Yeah, uh, I'm, I, I just hope it's, it's going to work out because there are some <laughs> crazy <laughs> okay. ideas. But the main idea is to, it, it would look completely different. Okay. And just uh, because I'm more into jumbo size now, because it's just better for percussion in general. It's going to be fan fretted as hell. Uh, and uh, lots of pickups inside, like an, on this guitar, but it's a little bit different. But the main idea that I have in my mind is to have a detunable bridge. It's like something like my Michael Mannering uses on yeah, his we'll bass. We'll see. Yeah, so it means that uh, you can detune the strings from both sides. For example, you can like have D note here, then you go to C here, and then you go to A sharp on this side, and then you go to C on this side, and then you go to D on this side. So, so yeah. Poor guitar builders. <laughs> Poor guitar builders. Yeah, oh yeah. my god. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully it would work. <laughs> just, I just hope because it would open so many things. I just can't imagine. So I'm really looking forward to this guitar, and uh, yeah, I just don't want to have my uh, <laughs> my surname here anymore because some people think I'm so egotistical. But in fact, <laughs> I, but in fact, I think it's just fun. <laughs> like fun. this guitar, I mean, the, the, the name of this guitar is Misco <laughs> because like it has my name on it. Sounds it's good. just so fun. Alex, it was really cool to have you here, and um, thanks for showing all your playing. And yeah, we're gonna listen to another song. Uh, yeah, th and thank you very much, guys. It was a great pleasure. I hope to see thanks. you in Germany. Thank I'm you. Really stoked. Thank you. Thank you.